Imagine your mother pouring liquor on your ice cream when you're only eight years of age, being hooked on cigarettes, cannabis, and cocaine by the age of 12. Imagine having your first rehab stint at 13, only then to be locked up in a psychiatric ward. Well, imagine no more. What I've just described is the real life story of one of the brightest stars Hollywood has ever known. Drew Barrymore. You're going to learn all about it as well as how she eventually managed to find sobriety coming right up. And ladies and gentlemen, just before we get into the video, if you want to get access to a free video training that shows you how to get immediate control of your drinking in a totally new way that doesn't rely on AA, therapy, rehab, willpower, or anything like that, please go ahead and click the link in the description. There'll be a video there that you can watch that really explains this completely different way of doing things. You'll have never seen anything like it before. So after you've watched that video, go ahead and check that one out. And now let's get back into it. Born in California in 1975, Barrymore was marked for the silver screen already as a young child. Her parents were both actors and her grandfather, John Barrymore, was a famous actor in the 1920s and 30s. Drew would get her first acting experiences only a few months after being born, appearing in commercials and other small roles. At the tender age of seven, she would land the acting role that would define her future career. That was the year she successfully auditioned for a role in the sci-fi blockbuster E.T. The Extraterrestrial. The film tells the story of a well, an extraterrestrial accidentally stranded on Earth during a secret mission. Elliot, a young schoolboy, soon finds and befriends E.T., eventually helping him return home. The film would go on to win four Academy Awards, spend a record-breaking 16 weeks at the top of the box office, and eventually become the highest-grossing production of all time. Overnight, Barrymore was propelled to superstardom, becoming a recognizable face all across the world. Though she would soon run into a rough patch that threatened to end her career entirely, which will come to shortly, she would eventually go on to star in a number of other blockbuster hits. These included, among many others, The Wedding Singer, Charlie's Angels, and He's Just Not That Into. Her net worth today is estimated at around a whopping $125 million. From what we just said, you might have gotten the impression that it's been all roses for Barrymore. And while money or fame were never in short order for her, she has had her fair share of struggles, and most of these were well publicized. Her father was an alcoholic and drug addict, leaving her mother no choice but to divorce him and raise Drew on her own. She was only a few months old at the time. As a child, this was something that was very hard for Drew to swallow, leading her to resent her mother. But there was more to it than that. Her mother never quite succeeded as an actress, and by all accounts, she was determined that her daughter not meet the same fate. After E.T., she started taking the young Drew to nightclubs and other adult establishments to socialize with celebrities. Before long, the young Drew was introduced to alcohol at just eight years of age. Cigarettes followed a short time later before giving way to cannabis and eventually cocaine. Her drinking soon got so out of control that she became addicted to alcohol. She had her first stint at rehab when she was only 12. Around this time, she also attempted to kill herself with a knife. Now, by the age of 13, things had gotten so out of control that her mother committed her to a psychiatric ward. She would spend a year and a half there, and this was no joke. This was a hardcore psychiatric facility where not behaving could leave you in isolation or put in restraints. To this day, Barrymore jokes about how other stars spending 30 days in a luxury rehab is, well, a walk in the park compared to what she went through. While harsh, in other interviews, the star has described the experience in a positive light. Quote, it was like serious recruitment training and boot camp, and it was a horrible and dark and very long-lived year and a half. But I needed it. I needed that whole insane discipline. While at the facility, the medical staff realized that part of the problem was actually down to her mother. At their recommendation, she went to court to seek her emancipation. And em emancipation is basically a legal process where the courts decide that a minor can be set free from the supervision of their parents. The minor is then able to live and function as an adult, entering into contracts and making all their own decisions without their parents' involvement. To qualify for emancipation, the minor must meet certain criteria, chief of which is economic self-sufficiency. The court granted her the emancipation, meaning that she was legally entitled to live completely on her own. Looking back on the entire situation today, Barrymore sums it up as her mother creating a monster and then not knowing what to do with it. And emancipation was the chance for her to wipe the slate clean. By that point, however, her acting career was in tatters. Having not landed a major role for years and with a heavily tarnished reputation, the young Barrymore felt like her acting days were over. For a while, she ended up working as a waitress in a cafe, a job which she admits that she absolutely was terrible at. Eventually, she was able to find work in Hollywood again first in some minor films before eventually landing roles in box office hits like 2000's Charlie's Angels. 
Barrymore would go on drinking for decades. Her drinking was never at a level where things got visibly out of control, at least not to her millions of fans around the world. There were no public breakdowns, problems with law enforcement, or things of this kind. But at the end of the day, it wasn't good. According to Cameron Diaz, Barrymore's longtime friend and co-star on the set of Charlie's Angels, things started to deteriorate after the breakdown of her third marriage. After her marriage fell apart, Barrymore once again turned heavily to booze. This reportedly caused her longtime therapist to terminate her as a client and led to the loss of some friends. As Barrymore would later describe, the divorce left her with the bitter aftertaste of death. Quote, there was no scandal, nothing went wrong, which is cleaner but makes it harder and more confusing. But there isn't the thing to point to. We tried so hard to make it work. A friend said to me, divorce is the death of a dream. That's exactly what it feels like. Something so final, you can't get it back. In 2021, Barrymore made an announcement that put a big smile on her fans and followers worldwide. In an interview on CBS's This Morning Show, the star revealed that she hadn't touched a drop of alcohol in two and a half years. Let's have a look. I have not had a drink of alcohol in two and a half years. Mm. And it was something that I realized just did not serve me in my life. When you are stuck in a pattern or if you are going through things and you not only admit them out loud, but you force yourself to say, I'm willing to make big changes. I think we all think we're very weak when we don't make those changes. That inner dialogue proves to us, you're not capable of change. You are weak, you're staying stuck. And when you break Break that cycle, the empowerment that comes out of it that says, I'm not weak, I'm actually strong, I've proven to myself that I am capable of change, and I believe people are capable of big changes. After keeping quiet about things for so long, Barrymore nowadays has no problems opening up about her past alcohol problems. Looking back, she describes her drinking days as, well, the only way I think one can rationally describe alcohol addiction, a prison. It's awesome that she's so candid about her past and putting her story out there for the benefit of others who might struggle. And if you click the video on the screen now, you can learn how to stop drinking alcohol just like Bradley Cooper.